Hi friends, today I'm going to show you how to make this spirograph design in After Effects in just a few minutes. Now you're going to need to download the free anti-static toolbox. You can follow the link in the description for that or check out this tutorial in the top right to learn more about that script panel of 25 free tools to make your life easier in After Effects. Now this is just one example, but it really is easy to make a lot of different looks by changing just a few parameters. Here in this example, I brought my Spyro into a new comp, made it a 3D layer, and then duplicated out a few copies and changed the Y angle by 30 degrees to create a 3D Spyro sphere. Spherograph? Well, so I don't know what it's called, but something like that. But there's a lot of applications for a technique like this, so let's get started. All right, new composition, and let's make it 1500 pixels square. And then we're going to create a circle. So I'm just double click on the ellipse tool up here. And we're going to make it 400 pixels. And make sure the stroke color is set to a nice medium gray. That's going to be important later on. All right, let's rename that circle one. And then if we go into our canvas tools here, we're going to duplicate out 12 of these with a radius of 200 and make sure rotate is checked. Now, it looks cool already. All right. All right, I'm gonna select all of those and go into the utilities here. And we're going to create a position and rotation effector. So if I click on that, we'll go into our effector and bump up this size a little bit so it affects kind of all of them. And then I'll take this, uh, fall off up a little too. And we're going to push the effector off to the side, off to one side just a little bit. If we create another null, we can parent our effector to that null. And if we rotate that null, it's just going to spin around kind of in a circle, affecting all of our objects. All right, so now we can go to our effector and um, let's, let's uh, pull up this affected position a little bit. Okay, let's actually we'll create a uh, quick expression on the rotation. Just, just option or alt click on the rotation and we'll write time times 200. So that way it'll just move along automatically. All right, and then I also want to make these circles grow a little bit as they're affected, but I didn't want to use the scale effector. Um, instead, I'm going to use the size and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the size to the auxiliary slider that has been added to this circle when I added the effector. So if I just option or alt click on that, and then I can grab this pick whip and drag it up to the auxiliary slider. Now the problem is our auxiliary slider is operating on a range from 0 to 100, and we want this to stay at 400 at the minimum. So I'm just going to add in right here at the end of this line plus 400. Now that's only affecting our top object so far and so what I want to do is just delete all the rest of our circles and there's one other thing I want to do while I'm here. I'm going to open up this circle and I'm going to add a zigzag so that our path is going to have a little bit of wiggle added to it. Now I want to change these parameters to turn them down a little bit. We're going to make the size go up actually and then turn down the ridges per segment to about three and make sure we turn the points to smooth. Okay. And then we will just duplicate these circles again. All right, now one of the things we want to do, these circles are rotating too much. Let's go into our effector. We could turn down this affected rotation, but I'm just going to check on this look at effector so that all of these circles are going to turn toward the effector as they're spinning around. All right, that's much better. And we go ahead and just turn off this preview. I'm going to add an effect to each circle, and that's going to be the hue and saturation. And what we're going to do is we're going to colorize each of these, but we want to colorize them based on their proximity to the effector. Uh, we can't really control these controls with an expression, but if we turn on this colorize, we can't control this colorize hue. So I'll just option or alt click on that. And then again, drag this pick whip up to our auxiliary slider. All right, let's make sure that we turn our colorization, I mean, our, the saturation up to 100. 
Okay, and then we can just copy this hue and saturation effect. And if we select this label group to get all those blue ones, we can just paste it. Okay, so there, now we have the position, the rotation, and the color are all being changed by our effector. Now, if we go into our effector controls again, we can uh, play around a little bit with this auxiliary multiplier. Because right now, uh, we're just going from yellow to red. And I want to get a little bit more color in there, a little bit more of the spectrum. So if I just turn this up some, it's going to... Uh, keep in mind, this is also affecting the size of our circles. So it's going to affect the size and it's going to affect the color. Now we could have two different effectors in here if we wanted to, to control those separately, but uh, I think we're okay. That's looking cool. Okay, now one more thing that's really going to help to make this look like a spirograph. We're going to add an adjustment layer on top and then add the echo effect. And that's just going to create an echo, a visual echo of whatever it sees in the timeline, just a little bit behind. So if I turn up this number of echoes, Then we're going to get something pretty cool looking. We can start to turn down the decay just a little bit so that each of those echoes will be a little bit darker than the previous one. All right, let's go into this adjustment layer and I'm just going to name that. And I might add another hue saturation here. And we can now just play around with the master hue. And we'll, I'm going to pull a little bit more red into this. So playing around with this setting as well as the effector multiplier, we'll kind of just dial in just exactly how much color you want to see. And I might just turn down the saturation a little bit on this master. And then I'm going to add some glow. I just really want some glow. So I'm going to add this glow rig, which is it's just a preset that I have, which is really just three glows that are all tied to the same threshold and intensity. So I can turn this down a little bit and then just turn down the glow intensity until we get something that looks right. I want kind of a lot of glow on this. And then I want to change the echo time. Uh, instead of making it a negative number so that the echoes come after it starts, I want them to be on right from the beginning. So you see right here, if you start this out, they're going to echo after it comes on. So if we set this to a positive number, I'm going to set this to 0 0.05. So they're a little bit farther apart also. That might be a bit too much. Let's just make this 0 0.04. Okay. And let's just take a look at this. And this echo effect is pretty expensive, so just uh, be careful with it. It's going to render kind of slowly. All right, well, that is it. I hope you've had fun following along and experimenting with me, and I will see you next time.